I'm, Peter, Peter Singer, I'm, let me just... Uh, this, is, this is the quote that I think um, caused so much uh, fuss and uh, protest, particularly at Princeton. You said, if a decision is taken by the parents and doctors that it's better that a baby should die, I believe it should be possible to carry out the decision not only by withholding or withdrawing life support, which can lead to the baby dying slowly from dehydration or from an infection, but by taking active steps to end the baby's life swiftly and humanely. Exactly, and that's what I've always said and that's what I stand by, that it's the parents and doctors making a decision in consultation. It's not some crazy guy going into a unit and, and yep. killing people. It's a, that, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a totally strong, it's a pretty sort of... strong observation. Kath, I can see your view and we'll come back to you, but I'd like to hear from the rest of the panel. Um, Matt? Look, uh, I think one of the fundamental goods of our society and, and many cultures is that we have a number of uh, laws, if you like, or natural laws that, that protect us and, and make us do the right thing. We've all got this little voice in our head which tells us sometimes what, what is the right thing and the wrong thing and when people wrong us or, or, or do good or bad to us. And one of those things that, is that we should protect human life and that human life uh, is, is sacrosanct and paramount. Uh, and I, I, I am deeply uncomfortable and deeply troubled about any society that would outsource decisions about life to some kind of uh, uh, bean counting calculus about the benefits and costs of particular individuals or how much costs or, 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 or harm it's going to impose on certain parents. Now, I accept that, that parents um, that find themselves in the situation having to care for a disabled child have a very difficult decision. But I also hear so many stories from parents who, who I remember being at a function once where a mother had, had knew that she was having a Down syndrome child, was very worried about it, uh, and then it became the greatest joy in her life, the greatest joy in her life by, by caring for this, this child and this person. And, and we must always, okay. I think, hold that dear and true to protect human life and, and treat it sacrosanct. Time is tight, so we'll have to try and keep racing through these. But Celeste, what's your view? I think, you know, just over and over again, we see certain sections of this um, society and how the, how the broader society is not accessible to these groups of people. And I think that's infinitely more, um, what's it called, you know, inflated when it comes to disability. So I, I, have, I have issues with the view. I would, um, I would much prefer to see a society that is capable and accessible to every single, you know, every single life that can be can be born and mm. people can thrive within it rather than rather than a view that you know could take support away from that but certainly i don't want to do that right i want the state to support people with disabilities and as i said enable them to live i, I rich think it, i think culturally it sets it up where people who are born that way are seen as a burden rather than seen as as a yeah. joy that yeah, can be exactly. um, that can access society let me hear from the rest of the panel. Kate Rothy? Yeah, look, I, I agree with Celeste. And I, I was talking to Peter before. I said I, I struggle to, to make, bridge the gap between um, a good theoretical conversation and reality. And I think this is one of those issues I really do struggle with. I don't like where this conversation takes us in a discussion around differently abled people in our society. Um, I learned something from a, a profoundly disabled um, seven-year-old girl who had a terminal illness. Um, she had more knowledge and wisdom in her seven years about death and dying that I will ever le le learn in a hundred years of, of living. So people of all abilities um, make a significant contribution to our society. And I think the real issue that we struggle with is making a decision to not to look after them when they're here, but to perhaps not have them here um, instead by, by terminating, um, for example, as you talk about, um, Peter, in some of your writings, um, profoundly disabled um, children. I mean, first of all, who gets to be judge and juror on what's profound? But people of all sorts of abilities teach us all sorts of things, and I think we'd be a much poorer society if um, we didn't have a full breadth of, of people of all abilities here. Lisa Singh, just quickly. Um, look, I think a, a test for a strong and cohesive society is one that looks after some of its most vulnerable, but also that provides supports for all people to, so that they can live a contributing you know, fulfilling life. And if that is the kind of society we have, then parents don't need to make a choice because they know that society will support their choice of, <clears throat> of having their child whatever ability, disability they may have.